sculpting for a 3D print. So many people have asked me to make a proper video for 3D printing workflow. Well, this video is just about that. I will tell you about some key elements, some preparations you need to do before exporting out your model, like how to optimize, create keys, how to split the model and how to resize it accurately. These are some steps you need to take for all your 3D models if you are planning to make them for 3D print. All of these topics will be covered in this video. Optimizing for 3D print So few things you have to keep in mind while sculpting for a 3D print. Keep your mesh watertight. Many people make mistakes while creating a character. They leave open spaces too much. Now those open spaces can come up intentionally like for example teeth of this skull or unintentionally like the mesh is too thin resulting creating these weird holes after animating it. These holes will give you trouble while doing 3D print. Either it will use resin too much or sometimes the print itself won't come out as clean as you intend it to. So my advice is to keep checking on your mesh. Always look for thin surfaces, then mesh it, smooth it out, don't let those surfaces get thinner. There is a really good feature in ZBrush called Backface Masking. It is a gem for those who are optimizing their model for 3D print. For example, go to Brush, Auto Masking and turn Backface Mask on. What it does is that whatever brush you are using it, it will only see the front visible side of the surface and ignore the back side. The weird holes after Dynamesh I showed you only happens when the brush effect is so strong it is going through this thinner surface but back face mask disables that and you only able to use brush on the front very handy tool second try to fill the spaces creatively if there are teeth on your mesh keep them close enough just don't let those small spaces happen on your mesh my third advice for optimizing your model would be choose design wisely 3d printing a character for example needs a lot of weight what I mean by that is if your model's lower part is thinner or small, the print will fall off. So if you are planning to create one, always add supports creatively so the print won't fall off. Now how creativity will be used here? Well if you are creating a vertical character standing for or posing, make the legs thicker so it can support all the weight. Thinner leg or legs with not enough mass will result the model into breaking into half. So, if you are posing, make sure the lower part supports the weight of the upper part. Most people do is split the mesh so the printing process would get much easier, hence killing the risk of falling off. We will talk further about this in the splitting section of the video. Splitting the model and creating the keys So before I tell you how to split and create the keys, we have to address the issue that why do we split the models? Well 3D printers are very sensitive when it comes to printing the large parts of the model and they take hours before finishing. There is literally no way to know either the print will come out just fine or it will mess up break the model. It is generally a wise thing to do is they print the model in several parts. For example, the arms, the legs and the head should be separated so we can print it and combine them later using the keys. This workflow is considered more appropriate because it is safer and more cleaner. But I have seen many people making some mistakes during the splitting process. For example, some people just straight up split the model without caring too much for the design, resulting a very unappealing print. Splitting should be done seamless. For example, the shoe should be a separate piece and the leg should be a separate piece. But what I made this is a mistake. I created this model over a year ago. The splitting I did is completely wrong. After the print the seam will be visible and it is not a good sign for a designer. The painting, the cleaning, all sorts of problems you could face during the post-production workflow. But this model on the other hand was done with these things kept in mind. See how the hands are separated from the torso, the legs are separated from the pants, I kept the dress separate, limbs separate and the head separate along with his cape. So if something in real life is separate for example clothing, try to keep it separate. Just figure out how do I split this creatively and make it seamless. Just see how I split it the hand, the key will go inside and hide inside the sleeves making it seamless and clean. 
Look at the professionals like SciShow Collectibles or Funko Pop. If you haven't already, I recommend watching the streams where they share behind the scenes including how they split the models, what goes on during the production and Pixelogic Zebra's YouTube channel has many streams you can watch. Creating Keys Now there are multiple ways to create the keys and there are multiple shape keys you can use. Some are basic like this one. Some are ballpoint joints used in creation for movable figurines like Barbie dolls and other movable toys. I am not gonna be going through creating every type of keys but this here is the basic shape key and it is universally accepted if you are splitting the bundle. Either you can use 3D modeling software like Blender or I will show you how to make it quickly in ZBrush using the modeler tool. So we have a cube here, it is a default one. If I press shift F you could see it is a very dense mesh for the modeler and we don't need that much topology so to fix it go to initialize type 1 on each of this column and click q cube and you would see our dense cube turned into a very basic one now we are ready to use the z modeler tool press b z and select the z modeler tool move the cursor to the face press spacebar select the scale now by clicking and dragging, it will scale the polygon and will create this shape. Press spacebar again and select move. Just stretch it out a little bit and we have our basic key ready. It is a very quick way to make a key. It's fast, effective and can get the job done easily. Resizing the model for 3D print Now this is an optional step. Many 3D printers have their own operating softwares and sometimes people use magic application in order to print the mesh. The scaling can be done into those softwares. But if you have a client, it is better that you scale the mesh before exporting it out in STL format. I scale my models all the time, either if I am selling it on a 3D marketplace or providing the file to a client. Now scaling the model is pretty straightforward in ZBrush. If you don't know, the transpose tool can be used to calculate the distance. Open the gizmo 3D by pressing W and then press Y to switch to transpose tool from gizmo 3D. Click and dragging onto the mesh lets you stretch out the transpose tool. Now can you see those units? These units are in millimeter and these are pretty small increments. We want it to be at least 50 millimeter or above. 50 millimeter could be a good size for miniature. I will append a cube now. Any cube will matter and I will just move it on the side. For this method to work, I will use a Z plugin called Scale Master. It is shipped by default in ZBrush. These 3 liter slides represent the units you can change. So make sure you have selected the cube because we will resize the cube, give it a desired dimension and that will scale the model accordingly. Let's say we want the cube to be 50 by 50 mm. I will just enter 50 once on either of the slides and it will be 50 on all 3. Now click on the resize sub tool. It will take the cube and resize the whole scene making the cube 50 mm along with every mesh on your scene. So if I use the transpose tool to measure the other model now, it will be close to 50 mm. It won't be the exact dimensions, but for to 3D print the figures and miniatures, we don't need it to be super accurate. This is just a fast workaround to resize your model in ZBrush. If you are going for super accuracy, for example jewelries, I recommend scaling it this way first then use another application like Magix to get the dimensions accurately. So guys this sums up all the topics in this video. These are not hardcore rules you have to follow. Take these steps as a guideline for the 3D print models. It is all about the mindset. Decide the very first what you are gonna be making this model for. For a game, start with a T-pose. For a 3D print, start planning how you will make the supports. How creative you can get with the designs. How to split the model while hiding the scenes. These decisions you will make at first will save you a lot of time later. I hope you like this video. Please check out my Astration store. Help me support the channel. Get some base meshes while you are at it. I will see you in the next video. Peace.